stand by. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Art of Achieving webinar. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn things over to Gail Ayers, CEO of Crew Network. Please go ahead. Thank you for joining us, and we're very happy to be able to introduce you to Ginger Bryant, who is the chairperson of our recognition committee. Uh, Ginger is a past president of San Francisco Crew, and we are very grateful that she's here to lead this committee. She is also past president of Crew Network, as are the committee members of this wonderful committee. So thank you to all the committee and Ginger. Uh, thank you for leading the call. Thank you, Gail. And uh, before we get started, though, I did want to, Gail, can you talk about the Q&A and if people have questions during the presentation, um, how they would submit them through the web, and then we will answer them all at the end? So, um, everybody, you should have a button at the top of your screen that says Q&A. So if you have a question or a comment at any point in time, you don't have to hold it till the you finish your thought. Um, go ahead and submit them, and then when we get done, hopefully we'll have a lot of time for Q&A. So uh, as Gail said, I am a past president of Crew Network. I'm also in my regular job the chief operating officer and chief financial officer of Ferris Regis Group of Northern California. We are a company that develops, acquires, and manages assets in Northern California. Um, we're also looking to purchase assets in Seattle and some of the other coastal markets, so we're very, very active right now. I want to introduce our recognition committee. These are some pretty amazing women, and a number of them are also on the call today so that they can hear the same thing that you're Here is a past president of EV Crew and also a past president of Crew Network. She is an attorney currently working with the Arizona State University as Associate General Counsel, helping their real estate department manage a lot of varied real estate interests and holdings. But prior to that, she has, I don't know, a lot of years as a transaction attorney in uh, various law firms. Kristen Blount is from New Wire. She's an MIT graduate and one of the most highly honored brokers in the Boston market, representing both landlords and tenants. She served as New Wire's president and also as the Crew Network president in 2010. Deborah Kwok served as president of Crew Sacramento before moving to the San Francisco Bay Area. She was a successful broker in that market came to the Bay Area working at Lucent and then moved to CBRE as a tenant rep primarily. She served as Crew Network's president in 2004. She has a big entrepreneurial spirit, forming at least two companies, most recently QAV Partners, which provides consulting and training services. Joan Rosoff is an attorney based in Philadelphia. She specializes in financial transactions, working with both the lenders and the borrower side of the deal. She was her chapter president and also served as a Crew Network president, received numerous networking awards um, over the years, and worked with a lot of crew members across the country. And Eliza Solander is president of Solander Hall, and Eliza has specialized in solving real estate challenges that are unique to nonprofits and small businesses. She served as president of the Dallas chapter and then as president of Crew Network. She was instrumental in the formation of Crew Foundation, serving as the chair for the, about three years and is our chair emeritus. She's received many, many awards throughout her career and most recently in Chicago at our convention was honored as the very first recipient of our Circle of Excellence Award. And then that's our committee and we are assisted by our board liaison, Diane Butler, who is Crew Network's immediate past president a past president also of Crew Dallas and the CEO of Butler Burger Group, a national commercial valuation and due diligence services firm. So as you can see, the network board has put together an amazing group of women with incredible skills, um, an entrepreneurial spirit, and a deep understanding and a commitment to Crew Network's mission. And this speaks to the importance that the board places on the role of our recognition program, because by achieving for recognizing the achievements of the women, we elevate the stature of all women in our industry and bring more people to the table to compete. Our goal today is really to help you understand a little bit more about our process, what we look for, 
how to really help us with submitting amazing nominations um, so that we can select the best honorees. So those of you who are chapter leaders on our call today, uh, how you can really help us is to make sure we have the very best examples in our four impact award categories and solid nominations for the Circle of Excellence Award. In a perfect world, I would say that it would be great if your chapters had very similar award programs or had a committee or a person within your chapter who is really looking for these nominations throughout the year and then shepherding them through the process. Um, we know that nominations come directly from crew members, hopefully nominating themselves and nominating others, but it's very important that our delegates, our chapter presidents, the leaders within our chapters also encourage their members to participate through promoting the awards program at chapter meetings, the website, communications like newsletters or emails that you have for uh, your members, and especially by identifying the highest member successes and helping get those nominations in really great shape into us on the web. We're not asking that you um, screen any of the nominations or eliminate choices, but we do ask that you know, if you've got a committee or a person who is managing that process, that you really focus on trying to make sure we've got the best submissions into the committee. A little bit about our timeline. We are well into the period where we are accepting nominations. Um, we have a few that have already come in. April 19th is our deadline. So it is time to make sure we really get the word out and to gather all the information and then get the nominations submitted via the website. So please make sure that you do that in the next month, uh, working through your committee chairs and you know whatever methods you have within your chapter to promote our program. Once the nominations close, we will inform the chapter president of the nominations from the chapter, and if there's anything that the board would like to contribute or give us feedback um, on those nominations, we will add that to the package that the committee reviews. We also will notify each of the nominees that they have been nominated for an award and will give them an opportunity to add any information to their nomination form. But I would say that the period that we have to review and select the honorees is very tight. So it's really important that we have good, solid nominations at the very beginning. I think that the committee will probably review over 50 nomination forms. So if you can imagine um, what our life is going to be like in May and June and help us get the best information and the most organized nomination, you'll do us all a, a really big favor. Um, in typical crew fashion, we have a grid and a form that we have certain criteria that we look at for for each of the impact award categories. And we rank those on various factors, and then that allows us to select the honoree for the year. In October, at our convention, we will announce the winners, and we hope that all the nominees and winners will be there in person. So that's another area where each of you as chapter leaders can help you know, bring lots of people to convention and help make sure that all your nominees are there. Some overall comments about all of the awards. We have, as I said, four impact award categories. And so these honor achievements that have occurred during the last 24 months. And then we have the Circle of Excellence Award, which really is not tied to a particular time frame at all. It's, it's someone who has been, you know, their entire career doing the things that we want to honor and recognize. Um, on behalf of, of Crew Network. So think about things that happened within the last 24 months uh, for the Impact Awards. And think of Circle of Excellence kind of like lifetime achievement, but the lifetime is not necessarily an over a lifetime. It's just an awesome lifetime achievement. Um, if there's one message that we can leave you with today, it's that details will really make the difference in the nominations that you submit. 
the six of us, we won't know, we may not know your nominee. I mean, we might. They might be someone that we run into because we know a lot of people within the crew network. But help make sure we really understand the story. And while we are looking for details, and I'll talk about each of the awards in a minute, um, raw numbers don't necessarily tell just the story. So we do want to know, like, the number of deals or or the size of deals, or the size of the economic impact, but also just make sure that it's the, it's sort of that intangible impact that the people had on either their community or on another crew member if they're doing business together, or how a transaction may have, you know, changed the direction of someone's career that we want to know. So if you can help us by connecting those dots and giving us the details, we'll really, really do better. Um, another way to make sure that your nomination is good is to talk to the nominee before you get all the information together and put it on the web. Ask them for input. Ask them for some of the information that we're looking for in putting the, uh, the nomination together so that we can have as complete a picture as possible of the amazing person that you would like to recognize. So now let's talk a little bit about each award. So our first impact award is called Entrepreneurial Spirit. Um, the text that you'll see on the screen is comes right off of our website, so that's a great place to go if you are you know looking for reminders. There's a lot of information on the website of examples of what would be great entrepreneurial spirit. And, we often think that this is someone who starts a new company or their own business, but it can also be someone that is very innovative within a larger company or someone who is bringing new techniques to a practice that makes their company smarter or, or faster. And I, I'm thinking some on the development side of, you know, people who are really great at sustainability and they've come up with some new new way of uh, being green or um, we're working on a couple of big construction projects and there's this new thing called IPD, an integrated project delivery, and someone who really made that, you know, happen within their organization and gives their organization a competitive edge, that could be someone that you could nominate for entrepreneurial spirit. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a new business. Um, it's being entrepreneurial. And again, think about how that person's entrepreneurial spirit impacted, you know, their company or the others around them. Uh, the second award that we have is member to member business. So this is this one's pretty easy for us to think about. Um, it's it's uh, doing business together and it's someone who is always been demonstrating an extraordinary commitment to pulling together the talents of crew members. And again, here we say resulting in measurable business for other crew members. And so one of the things that we're looking for here is, again, over the last 24 months, what kinds of referrals have happened between crew members? How did that, um, how'd that come about? And we really do want to see here not just referrals themselves, but a resulting business for another crew member. Help us understand how that business referral made a difference to the crew members who are part of that team. Um, it might have been even like a referral, it might be small dollars, but it could have been a referral to a crew member who was starting their own business or had just moved into a new position. And because of those referrals, this crew member now has a successful company or this crew member maybe even got a promotion or is seen in a whole new way within their organization as a result of their connections within crew that helped launch that part of their career. Those are the kinds of, of aspects of the story, again, the impact that those referrals had because really we do expect that everybody within crew is always going to be referring business to each other. So it's like, okay, what made these referrals or this particular referral special? Um, and how? what are the names of the crew members who were touched or who were impacted, who were part of the transaction? And we know that some things are um, – are confidential, and but you can still give us a sense for the size or the sense of the impact of the transactions that are in the member-to-member -member business. 
The third Impact Award that I want to talk about is the Career Advancement for Women Award. And this is someone who is really always trying to elevate the status of women in commercial real estate. There are some really great examples, again, on the website of ways that that people do this. Um, We often think of this as people who maybe are mentors or sponsors in a formal program, but there are also crew members who are maybe doing things that are less formal and um, to help other crew members and to help them advance their career. This is an award or nomination where it would be very, very helpful to not only have information from the nominee, but to be able to uh, maybe even get almost, I would call it a testimonial from the women who were impacted from interacting with or from the help that this particular crew member gave them in their career. Um, Some of those people might not be members yet because this individual might be someone who is maybe working with younger women who are coming into the industry. But it's very important to help us understand the impact that the nominee had on those women um, and how their support or their activities, their actions, um, enhance that person's career and move them into our industry. Our fourth impact award has a bit of a new name this year. It used to be the Economic Improvement Award, and we have added Economic and Community Improvement Award. And here we want to honor a crew member who played a pivotal role in a real estate project. So it might be a developer, it might be the owner, but it could also be an attorney, it could be someone on the financial side, Um, it, it could be anyone who was part of that team that got a project. So it is going to be associated with a project, and that project needs to have been completed or at least achieved a significant milestone if it's perhaps, say, part of a a master plan or a revitalization of a community within the last 24 months. Um, In addition to the information about the project, because that's often easy for us to get and to understand, uh, but we need to help us understand how that project impacted or improved the community. Was it new jobs that were created? Was it changing the community's perception of this particular part of the neighborhood? Um, And then tell us how the nominee, what role they played, and how they were important to bringing this particular project to life. So we often, I served on this committee a couple of years ago, and we often see really great projects and a list of the people who work on the project, but it's helpful for us to really understand what role the person that you're nominating played in making this um, a great project. So those were our four impact awards. Uh, Last year, we had our very first Circle of Excellence Awards presented. And um, that was a new award for us last year. And so, again, we are – I don't know how much I really need to say about this one. I think everybody kind of knows instinctively what Circle of Excellence is. And But we wanted something that would allow us to um, be able to recognize those who aren't necessarily driven by a particular transaction or a particular project but who have always been there focused on the same things that Crew Network is focused on, advancing our industry, showing support for women, um, being excellent in everything that they do personally and professionally. And I think you know those people when you come across them. And uh, and so we would hope that we will have some nominations uh, for Circle of Excellence as well. So let me also say that um, it's not limited to only one selection. The committee has the ability to select more than one winner in each of the categories if we choose to do so. Um, And our hope is that we would get an amazing number of nominations and be able to 
maybe have even more than one in a category. Um, but we, we are looking for really, the, if you think about how important the awards program is for Crew Network and for what we're trying to do, put yourself in the, our shoes and think about as we publicize the honorees and the award winners, things that are public relations um, that have good public relations value and really help tell the story of our members and how they're successful and how Crew Network is changing the face of our industry and elevating the stature of women and everyone else in the industry. So if you kind of put those things in, in mind as you're pulling the nominations together, um, I think you will have a successful nomination for us. And that is probably all I had publicly prepared, and so I hope we have lots of time, and I hope we have lots of questions that um, we can help answer for you. So, Gail, you're going to read questions, and you or I will answer them as appropriate. Yes, and I want to thank you, Ginger. That was an excellent summary, and uh, we, we appreciate the detail that you gave us, and that it is also true that as we work through these applications, the more specific you are, always the better. And when you share the application with the person that you're intending to nominate, it helps uh, if they um, have input, too. So we appreciate that they can tell you more about what they've accomplished sometimes than even you think. But our first question comes from Deborah. And uh, Deborah's question says, uh, will we be showing uh, the meeting attendees um, on the website page for awards? And uh, would it be ideal if everyone was very familiar with navigating the Crew Network website? But that is not always the case. Yes, uh, Deborah, you're correct that uh, we will have all of this information up on the Crew Network website and the various awards. And uh, if anyone wants to go there to look for um, information, more information about these awards, it will be there. Um, but I think that we had not planned on going through the website on today's call. But if anyone who's listening needs uh, assistance, they certainly can call me, and I'll be glad to help them find it. And, and Gail, the, um, it's been a while since I was a uh, – delegate and worked on the backbone of the website, but we have recorded this today and the PowerPoint that is um, that we've gone through, and will the delegates and the chapter leaders know where to easily get that information? So if they want to play it back for, say, their committee or if somebody on their chapter was unable to attend the call today, they can listen to this later? Yes, Deb. Uh, what we'll do for um, for the delegates is we do now have a delegate web page, and we keep that updated, and we'll make sure that these go on the delegate web page so that they'll be able to easily find them to there. And we'll remind them um, when we send out the next notice that this is up. But, um, yes, it will be on there. The delegates can go straight to their page. Uh, Ginger, we do have one question that's coming uh, from the point of view of confidentiality. And uh, Isabel is asking, can principles to a transaction be referred generically to, or must they be specifically identified? And I think she's asking this because, of, of course, the confidential confidentiality of some of the agreements. So the question is essentially, do the principles to a transaction have to be identified by name, or would it be okay to just identify them generically? Well, you, you cannot break a confidentiality agreement. So I would say, yeah, and I would not, so yes, you could. You could say, the, you know, the, I mean, it's kind of interesting. Once the transaction is done, there's usually some press, but yes, I mean, I know there are some things that we won't actually put in the press release, and everybody seems to know who's who and what the numbers were, but nobody officially ever told them. Um, so, yes, you can refer to them in a generic way. 
in terms of describing the transaction, um, and then that would be fine. Ginger, at this point, I don't have any more questions. Well, goodness. This is a very <laughs> quiet group for crew. It is indeed. Not well, another question? Yeah. Well, we must have done a great job. Um, but anyway, well, I would just like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules. Um, to listen to our presentation today, and aha, I see a new question. I think Gail is popping a new, in. So. A new question, yes. It's a, a question from Janet that says, can there be multiple nominees for one award? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. And so particularly um, in the case of member-to-member -member business or in the case of career advancement for women, I think we have often seen that where um, both, of, or b both of those individuals are crew members and they both participated in the, doing the transaction. Although, like in the case of member-to-member -member business, you often have one person is generating or in, is the instigator of pulling people together, but you might have somebody where you know, I called Maureen and said, I need some help with this, and then Maureen turned and called three other crew members, and so you might nominate Maureen and myself for the member-to-member -member business award. Um, but it's the one that we want to recognize is the person who is pulling the resources together, um, not necessarily, you know, so not everybody on that team who did the business together would receive the award. It would be um, the person who is controlling that process and making the choice to hire or engage or refer the business to another crew member. So I hope that that answers your question. And Ginger, there's another question from Mary Jim uh, asking if can a previous nominee who wasn't selected before be nominated again? And I think clearly the answer to that is absolutely. Yes. We would yes. welcome. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, but, I mean, you're going to nominate them. If it's for an impact award, you're going to nominate them for something that has occurred over the last couple of years. So if they were nominated two or three years ago for perhaps a, um, a large transaction, but if they're a typical crew member and they're doing, if you're thinking member-to-member -member business or career advancement, they are probably uh, not stopping doing what they've been doing all along anyway. And so they probably got something within the last couple of years that you would want to recognize them for. So, yes, a prior – and even um, a prior award recipient doesn't mean that they can't be nominated again. So uh, if, they didn't, if they didn't receive an award, yes, they can be renominated. Right. We have a, another question that says, um, you know, they're doing local awards, and can – they um, send some of their local award winners to Crew Network to compete, and the answer again is absolutely. We're hoping the chapters will begin to do that because it elevates the awards um, and it gives uh, chapters a chance to have people recognized nationally. Uh, yes, yes, and I think, you know, I mean, in an awesome world, Many of our chapters would have award, well, every chapter would have an awards program of some kind and that hopefully they would have at least one or more award that might mirror or help them um, identify those great successes and bring them to the national level for national recognition because if someone received that award uh, at your local chapter, you know, when they receive the Crew Network Award, they get even more recognition for themselves, their company, um, you know, the, their their business, and uh, so they get even more publicity from that. I think, uh, Ginger, you may have just answered Diana's question because her question was, uh, have we written anything about the benefits of being nominated? Um, but, of course, that would mean the stature. We do a great deal of advertising uh, nationally. Uh, we communicate to all the companies who wins the award. So it, it really is prestigious. Yes, but I think Diana is looking for, do you have a little blurb um, 
from someone, you know, from Denise's group that you could send out to the delegates or to the chapter leaders so that as they're promoting our program, they could just grab those two or three sentences? Um, We'd be glad to do that. We haven't done it before, but it, it will not be a problem to do that. And we'll do it as a lead-in to the slides and, and put something right there. Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions, Ginger. Have you seen anything? Um, uh, let's see. I see something from Maureen. I did not find content there. Yeah. I think it was if I would ask people to indicate whether they're thinking of candidates and whether they have any questions. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think um, mm -hmm. it's not something I can easily do. Yep, and I see, yes, yeah, Diana did a follow-up. So, yes, Gail, as you put that together, we, we need to help encourage the nominees to um, need to encourage people to nominate someone else. Mm -hmm. We all need to toot our own horn and toot other <laughs> women's horns. I think we just about have it, Ginger. I'm not finding in any unanswered oh. calls. Wait, uh, I see a new one from come? Isabel. Can you enter the same transaction in more than one category? Um, yes. If you particularly yes, because you might have member to member business, and it might also be a project or a transaction that would be economic and community improvement. Um, so yes, but your nomination will be a little different because. We are looking for the, you know, if you're doing it in member-to-member -member business, we want to hear the story of who was the member who pulled the team together and how did that happen. And if you're submitting that transaction in economic and community improvement, we want to understand how that particular transaction uh, impacted the community, whether it was, you know, bringing in revenues or, or changing, you know, making a significant change to how the that particular part of the community looks. So make sure that your nomination has appropriately responds to the award category that you're submitting it in. But yes, it could fall into two categories. Um, Ginger, there's one more question from Eileen, and she asks, is, um, it, is the grid form that we use to evaluate the candidates available uh, publicly? And I'm sorry, but it is not, Eileen. One of the reasons that we don't do that is because we do not want to completely um, convey all the information, um, but it, it, as long as you are specific and you are uh, outcome oriented, I think you will have an excellent uh, an excellent piece of competition there for the committee as they review the applicants. Um, we just generally don't give out the grid form in advance. Yeah, and it's not, you know, I, what I would say is it's a, if you look at the website where we give examples of what's happening with impact awards, I think it's pretty easy to understand the, the kinds of things we're going to look at in each of the award categories. But I would tell you that it's just not like a, you don't, we don't sit down and put ones, twos, and threes in each of the things and add them up and then say, okay, that is the, you know, that is the winner. Because there's always that intangible. And I think if I remember from maybe not this one, but another thing that I've judged, there's a column that just says sort of the wow factor or the I don't know what, but there's something special about this award, this particular nomination that is grabbing me, and then you kind of go back and look at it. So for us, the grid is really to help us just remember what are the things we need to think about for each of the awards. And so if we look at how we describe the awards on the website, I think that that um, is, will, will help you. I think so, too, Ginger, and also if anyone has any questions, it's okay to call either me or Ginger or a member of the committee if you wanted to talk through it. We don't do any campaigning for any particular candidates, but it is um, it, it is true that sometimes it helps if you do include 
more information than you think is necessary. Uh, more is better in terms of showing their out, output and the things they're able to accomplish. Ginger, I'm not seeing other questions. Okay. Well, with that, um, we will close our webinar for today. And again, thank you very, very much for taking the time out of your schedule. I hope that this was helpful, and I hope to see lots of awesome nominations for our Impact Awards and our Circle of Excellence Awards this year. Um, so make it difficult for us, but easy for us. Make it difficult by giving us a lot of really, really good choices. Um, but make it easy by putting that information in a way that we can easily understand, you know, what is special and what is impactful. And, um, again, reach out to, to Gail or to anyone really on the committee if you have questions. Um, as she said, it's not like a campaigning thing, but if, you're, if you have a question about something, please feel free to reach out to any of us. We're happy to, um, to help you. Thank you, Ginger, and with this we conclude today's uh, re video recording, and it will be recorded and posted on our website. Thank you.